But hello and welcome back to my freaking version of what if Doctor Who wasn't cancelled. In this series, I take a look at one question. What if Doctor Who hadn't been cancelled in 1989? Today, we're looking at season 44, 2007. <laughs> Season 44 would have aired in autumn of 2007. It would have been the first season for the new Doctor, David Morrissey, the new companions, Catherine Tate of Donna Noble and Devon Harris, played by Doug Reef Scott. The season would be made up of eight 45-minute episodes, which would be released, the season would be released on DVD of April the next year. This season would be an absolute mad season with having returning villains such as the Daleks, the Cybermen, the Master, the Wurren, the Ice Warriors and the Weeping Angels. This season would be notable for being one of the most popular seasons of Russell T Davies' career and it would have also been one of the best seasons for basically Doctor Who in general really. So with all that out the way, let's get on. To Doctor Who season 44. Our first episode is The Fact of Death by Ruffle T. Davies. Donna Noble is determined to find out the truth behind her new job, even if it means braving the villain of Mrs. Foster. But when an alien threat escalates out of control, Donna finds herself befriending the mysterious Doctor. Can they stop Mrs. Foster's plans before the March of the Adipose begins at last? This episode would have been the new story for the new companion, Donna Noble, and the first story for the new Doctor, David Morrissey. Our next story is Storm Warning by Alan Barnes. Devon Harris is on His Majesty's airship, the 101, set which sets off for a maiden voyage to the f- farthest flung reaches of the British Empire, carrying the brightest lights of the Imperial fleet, carrying the hopes and dreams of a breathless nation. However, th- there's a storm coming. There's something unspeakable, something with wings crawling across the stern. Thousands of feet high in the blackening sky, the crew of the 101 embrace themselves. When the storm breaks, their lives won't be... A- all that at stake. The future of the galaxy will be hanging by a thread. This story is the new story for the new companion, Devon Harris, played by Doug Reef Scott. Our next story is Return of the Daleks by Gareth Roberts. No one could ever know. We had to erase the past, change everything, start again. But even though it's been centuries now, in our hearts, no, none of us feels truly safe. I think. Even if our people were to survive until the end of time itself, we would still fear the return of the Daleks. This story really is a great episode for the Daleks, and it really gives them um, a return, but with a bang. Our next episode is Silver Finger by Robert Sherman. The Doctor, Devon and Donna are summoned by MI6 to investigate a mysterious organisation located in Russia, headed by Dr Vladimir Orenko, that is connected to the disappearances of many people. The TARDIS crew go undercover at the company to investigate, but soon discover a much bigger threat than just corrupt businessmen. This story it would have been the return of the Cybermen, who were last seen in Doctor Who Doomsday. Our next story is We're in Isle, written by William Gallagher. The year is um, 16,127. Four decades have passed since um, the colonists of Nova Beacon returned to uh, repopulate the once devastated Earth. And the chosen few are finding the business of survival tough. Far beyond the sterile city of a sanitised nervous city, transmart scientist Roger Bookman has brought his family to an island surrounded by what they 
once called Loch Lomond. Hoping to re-establish the colony he was forced to abandon many years before, but something else resides in the lock. A pestilent alien infestation that the Doctor, beaming in four, Nervous City uh, remembers only too well from his time aboard the Beacon. The Wirren are back, and they are hungry. This episode would have been the return of the Wirren, not seen since Ark in Space. Our next episode is Fallen Angels by Stephen Moffat. One, once upon a time, a man named Rastan Djokovic kept a diary. However, the things that he saw made him go insane and he was kept at a sanatorium in Russia. But the next day, he was gone. The Doctor wants to find out the mysterious truth about Rastan Djokovic's disappearance and he knows that one of his old enemies is behind it. This story would have been the return of the Weeping Angels, not seen since Blink in season 40. Our next story is Demoth by Jonathan Morris. Millions of years ago, the noble ice warriors fled to Demoth, moon of Mars, hoping to set out the radioactive death row of their home planet. When the TARDIS lands on Demoth, the Doctor discovers that the Warriors' ancient catacombs are now a popular stop for space tourists. But the Martian dynasties are more than history and the Warriors are far from extinct. It's not for nothing that Demoth is the ancient word for dread. This story would have been the return of the Ice Warriors and it would have returned it was. Um, it would have gotten some of the best ratings for the series. Our finale of the season is The Leader of Death, written by Paul Cornell and Robert Sherman. The Doctor, Devin and Donna return to present-day London, horrified to discover that Prime Minister Harold Saxon is the master. Saxon informs the world about receiving contact from an alien race called Toclophane, framed as fugitive. The Doctor, Devin and Donna n- n- try to sneak in and stop the master before he unleashes a wave of terror but if dark ambitions reach beyond the staff wow what a finale this would have been in one of the best finales of doctor who in its entire history